Hi everyone! Many of you have been asking me to show you how to make such a rainbow spoon for a long time, but the thing is, I myself don't really know how to make it, so let us find out together. Besides colorful spoons, you might be noticed that I started using a radio code, a portable radiation detector and spectrometer for all nature and science enthusiasts. It's capable of measuring radiation 20 times faster than the conventional Giger counter. Put the device on your pocket and have fun exploring unknown places and drawing radioactivity tracks on Google Maps. The most amazing feature is that radio code detects isotopes from the spectrum of radiation. You can even analyze some food for radioactive contamination. Radio code works with a mobile app via Bluetooth. It weighs less than 100 grams and operated on a single charge for up to 20 days. Radio code is a great tool for scientific experiments, research and ensuring safety. I'll leave the link below. I bought this rainbow spoon several years ago at Zara home. I use it almost every day and it's surprising how after all this time the coating almost hasn't worn out and after 5 years of use there are only several scratches on it. Besides this spoon I also have a spinner with a similar coating and also such a strange shape called anti-alloyed. It's an interesting thing just as it's coating. But how did the manufacturers manage to give these things such an unusual finish? To begin with, I decided to employ a technique known to me, which is used to apply a rainbow coating to different metals and to check if it's going to work with my items. In one of my previous videos, I already showed you how to dye metal without any dye. The technique is called anodizing. Using this method, you can run electrical current through solutions of different chemicals, dyeing the metal on the anode almost in any color of the rainbow, which is why the technique is called anodizing. Metals of the 4 and 5 groups of the periodic table are most suitable for this, but in most cases it is titanium that is used for such purposes. The color of the finish depends on the applied voltage and the higher the voltage on the anode is, the greener the color gets. But at this point it's quite problematic to anodize it because of the matte handle which will make it practically impossible to see colors. That is why first of all I decided to polish it thoroughly. After polishing, I am preparing a 10% citric acid solution and lowering electrodes into the container. A piece of titanium foil will serve as a cathode and my polished spoon will serve as an anode. Now I am lowering it into the solution and then I am slowly pulling it out, released increasing voltage on my current source. During this process there forms a thin oxide film on the surface of titanium. As the higher the voltage is, the thicker it gets. It is the thickness of this film that determines the color of the metal. This is a result of the phenomenon called interference of light. I think every one of you observed this phenomenon when you looked at a paddle with rainbow patterns created by spilled petrol. Because of petrol's high fluidity, it creates a thin film on the surface of water, being just tens of nanometers thick, which is why the light wave, traveling through it, overlaps with the light reflected off the surface of water, thus changing the wavelength of the reflected light. A similar thing happens to my spoon, but instead of petrol, there is a thin semi-transparent titanium oxide film which creates the same light interference effect. Just because of such unusual wave effects, the spoon, just as the surface of petrol, gets dyed in different colors. It looks quite interesting, but how similar is this spoon to that very rainbow spoon from the Zara home shop? 
When compared with the manufactured spoon, it becomes obvious that my spoon's color isn't that vivid as that of the manufactured spoon, which has a better contrast ratio and has a smoother color. We can also see that the anodized titanium color is more bleak and its color transition is sharper. Comparing the hardness of both spoons, I noticed that for instance if I polish both spoons with a rotary tool, I saw that the rainbow titanium film of my spoon rubs off in seconds, whereas the film on the other spoon takes a bit longer to rub off. Most probably the other rainbow film is more durable. If you compare the weights of both spoons, you will see that even though the titanium spoon is bigger, it still weights significantly less than its counterpart spoon, which is likely to be made of steel. Hmm, since instead of anodizing, some other technique was used to call this spoon from the shop. I have no choice but to start searching for this technique in science articles. After several hours of searching, I found this article, which speaks about steel coating with rather similar colors and properties. In this picture, it is most noticeable that the color of my spoon and that of the spoon in the picture look alike. According to the description, the coating consists of a titanium nitride film sprayed with titanium aluminum nitride. However, it is exceptionally difficult to make such coating at home, especially if I want to achieve a finish similar to those of items produced by factories. That is why I'll have to go to our university and see if anyone knows how to make such coating there. I'm heading to the Department of Mechanical and Industrial Engineering of Tallinn University of Technology where I was lucky enough to meet scientists who deal with hard coatings of steel tools, for instance such tools as milling cutters or drill bits. My name is Vitaly Podgurski, I am a older research director in the Tallinn Technical University. We are working on hard coatings. I have brought several regular steel spoons with me, to which I will try to apply the same rainbow coating that my spoon from the Zara shop has. There is a rather big semi-industrial machine used to produce those very coatings in the laboratory. On the day I arrived, scientists were making titanium nitride coating for such milling cutters to order for one Estonian company. There are several stages of applying coating with this technique. First, so-called soap trays, for instance steel milling cutters, need to be cleaned off dirt and grease left after the manufacturing process. We can just rinse them, or to do a more thorough cleaning, we can heat them up in a special vacuum chamber in order to remove all dirt from them, and thus improve their adhesion or, to put it simply, improve the sticking of the new coating to the surface of metal. To further improve the adhesion of the milling cutters, they are treated with abrasive blasting, with the help of the smallest aluminum oxide particles, being just 25 microns in size. Thus, it creates an ideal surface for applying titanium nitride. According to scientists, the process of preparing for coating and the price of the equipment for preparing a substrate almost cost more than the very equipment for coating. By the way, this equipment cost almost 1 million euros. After cleaning, prepared milling cutters are inserted in the so-called carousel, which is in turn inserted in the equipment's chamber, where the whole process takes place. We can also see that there is a metal rod on the machine's door. This is a titanium cathode made of a high-quality titanium, which produces titanium nitride. Besides milling cutters, we decided to insert my steel spoon into the carousel in order to coat it in a titanium nitrate too, because everything that is in this chamber is evenly sprayed with a such a golden coating. After all the preparation, the door of the machine is closed, and the machine is set to an automatic program for spraying titanium nitride, which lasts for about 4 hours. I was told many operations in this expensive machine are automated and are part of the commercial secret of the manufacturers of this machine, 
However, I was allowed to share with you some basic things and operating principles. After turning on the machine, first all air is pumped out of the main chamber and a powerful vacuum is created in order to remove all oxygen. After that, some nitrogen from the gas cylinders is pumped into the chamber to create a nitrogen atmosphere. After that, a voltage with very strong electric current of about 150 amperes is created between the cathode and anode, which creates an electric arc on the spinning titanium cathode. This causes titanium to evaporate off the surface and start moving towards the spinning carousel and at the same time to react with nitrogen in the chamber, creating yellow titanium nitride. All of this happens at the temperature of about 450 degrees Celsius, that is why the walls of the chamber should withstand such conditions. This is how, layer after layer, a film golden titanium nitride film, being about 2 micrometers thick, caused the milling cutters and my spoon. However, I was not told the precise characteristics. By the way, such a cathodic arc deposition technology was invented back in the 1970s in the USSR, however, its widespread commercial use began when the license was sold to some Western companies. That is why some details about the work of such machines are still shrouded in secrecy. Nevertheless, after deposition, the milling cutters and some drill bits are covered in a such a layer of yellow titanium nitride, which makes them much more resistant to wearing out and prolongs their service life. The same thing happened to my spoon. Now it looks much more attractive, looking like it's made of gold. Besides, it has become much more resistant to scratches, just as a long-lasting drill bits, because titanium nitride is a hundred times harder than a regular stainless steel. Nowadays, titanium nitride is used to coat not only spoons, but also many of charged domes, which seem to be made of gold, even though they don't contain a single gram of gold. Titanium nitride is also used to coat many decorations, such as door handles, metallic dishes, and also some mobile parts of different mechanisms, because this coating is incredibly slick. Now, according to the article mentioned earlier, to rainbow coat my golden spoon, we need to apply a thin layer of titanium aluminum nitride to it. To do that, I gave my spoon to be sprayed with some drill bits again, which at that time were being sprayed to other. To create a titanium aluminum layer, one more cathode rod is inserted into the machine. This time it's an aluminum rod. The process here runs in the same way as it did with titanium nitride. But this time an electric arc evaporates two metals, titanium and aluminium, which react with nitrogen in the hot chamber and get deposited on the items in the form of a hard layer of titanium-aluminium nitride. In theory, if this process is run quickly, a thin layer, being just 15 nanometers thick, is supposed to coat my golden spoon, creating the light interference effect, making it look like that very spoon from the Zara shop. However, in reality, when I was given the coated spoon, it turned out to be just black. Most probably, the titanium aluminum nitrate layer is too thick here. Later I was told that the coating machine is very powerful and just cannot deposit thin nanometer layers, as the article describes. The minimum thickness it can apply is half a micron, which is already 10 times more than what I need. An ideal coating should look like the one on this spacer. This spacer, coated in yellow titanium nitride layer, was sprayed with a thin layer of titanium aluminum nitride, which created such beautiful rainbow patterns. But such a result was probably achieved by coincidence. However, there is still one green spot on one of the spoons, where the titanium aluminum nitride layer is thinner because of the uneven deposition, but this is likely to be an accident. Still now I have a couple of quite unusual black spoons with exceptionally durable coating. If you compare this black titanium aluminum nitride coating with just regular titanium nitride coating, you will see that the black coating is more resistant to the rubbing of a rotary tool. The mark on the golden spoon is more noticeable. 
We can also easily scratch titanium nitrate with such a black spoon, whereas we cannot do the opposite. It's not surprising, because black titanium aluminium nitrite is two times harder than a regular yellow titanium nitrite. But still, how can I make such a rainbow spoon, you might be wondering. We have considered one method, and it failed, but it turns out that there exists yet another method. We can create so-called titanium oxynitrite coating. For instance, if I take one of my yellow spoons coated in titanium nitrite and heat it up over a gas burner, upon cooling, part of titanium nitrite will oxidize, creating that very titanium nitrite rainbow layer. Still, this color isn't as vivid as that of the manufactured spoon. What's the difference? Factories use a different kind of machine for coating with titanium oxynitrite, and it's done at lower temperatures and at slower speeds. These machines are called magnetron sputtering machines. Just as was done in my case, first the machine applies a layer of a yellow titanium nitrite, and then some oxygen is pumped into the chamber, which oxidizes the freshly obtained nitrite, giving it an even rainbow pattern, the very same pattern that this spoon has. Unfortunately, there is no such equipment at our university, but the Chinese have lots of them, and they have saturated the market with various items having this rainbow pattern. The only advantage is that such items are cheap, but are not always of high quality. I would like to thank Vitaly Podgursky and Keiner Wagistream from Tallinn University of Technology for helping me with the experiments. Well, I think now finally you know how to make such unusual spoons and especially that very rainbow spoon that appeared in my video so frequently. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see many more new and interesting.